Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Prada Museum for another of our weekly sessions in English here with the nonprofit organization, the American Friends of the Prada Museum. Today, we're going to be looking at a painting by El Greco. We have a wonderful collection of paintings by El Greco here, this really original, really unique painter. One of the most important collections of El Greco in the entire world is here at the Prado. Really, you can't see El Greco um, anywhere else like you can here at the Prado Museum. So today, we're going to be looking at this painting of Saint Sebastian. So who was Saint Sebastian? Sebastian was... Uh, a Roman soldier, He's, uh, he was, lived in the third century. He is from Gaul, from present-day France. And as part of the Roman army, he formed part of a really elite guard. And that elite guard was, uh, was dedicated to protecting the emperor, the emperor Diocletian. And Diocletian was persecuting Christians at the time. And Sebastian was a Christian, but he was hiding his Christianity. He was hiding his beliefs. When Diocletian finally found out that Sebastian was a Christian, that he had hid this from him, and that somebody so close to him had defied him, had tricked him in this way, he was absolutely livid. And so he, he sentenced Sebastian to death. And he ordered his companions to tie him to a tree and to shoot him with arrows. And so this is the, the position that we see him in now tied to this tree and shot with arrows. And they left him for dead. But Sebastian didn't die. He was found by a Christian woman whose name was Irene, and she nursed him back to health. Now, Sebastian could have escaped, he could have run away, he could have, he could have continued to live on, but he decided that, that he wanted to go back and confront Diocletian. And so he did, and when he confronted the emperor, he was, of course, livid again that Sebastian had survived, and so he sentenced him to death for a second time, and he was clubbed to death uh, there in front of the emperor, and then finally did die. And uh, Christians eventually took his body, and they buried him in the catacombs in Rome. And this has been a really popular subject, really, really since, since the medieval times. So in the medieval times, uh, Sebastian was thought to perhaps have some kind of healing power um, for the plague. And then in the Renaissance, he continued to be really popular. The subject was really popular, but maybe with a little bit of a different meaning because Sebastian was a very young man and he was very handsome and he was in great physical condition. He was a soldier. And so he's sort of thought of as this Christian Apollo kind of figure. And so in the Renaissance, having a St. Sebastian in your collection would maybe be one way to really have an excuse to have a beautiful male nude without really pushing religious and societal norms. And El Greco, as we said, is this really original painter. He's from Crete. He was born in Crete in 1541, and he trained there. And Crete was an island that had a lot of workshops for icon paintings, these small religious paintings from the Byzantine tradition. And after some time, Greco moved to Venice, and in Venice he was influenced by, by the painting that was happening there, this really important Venetian school, especially painters like Titian. And from there he moved on to Rome for some time, and then finally to Spain. And in Spain he landed in Toledo. And El Greco was a painter who, whose style has entirely transformed over the course of his career. And this painting is from that final period, his own really particular style, this mature style that he's so, he's so recognized for. And as you can see, something has happened to this painting as well, right? We have this divide in the middle. This painting was split up into two different pieces at some point in history. Now, why would somebody cut a painting by El Greco in half? Well, there's a few different ideas of maybe why that might have happened. And one of them is that perhaps this lower portion was in poorer condition, and so to save a perfectly good torso, they cut the painting in half. Uh, but there's another idea as well. El Greco hasn't always been the popular painter that we know him to be now, so admired, so loved. Uh, he, for a long time, El Greco was really uh, misunderstood and even generally disliked. But in the 19th century, he's starting to be rediscovered. And during this time, somebody might have had a Greco and thought that, well, if they could make two Grecos out of one, then 
they'd like to do that. And so that would be another reason that perhaps somebody would split this painting in half. We can see that the upper portion, the torso, has also been produced on the sides. That painting was on display in the Casa Museo del Greco in Toledo for many years, and it belonged to the Marquess of Casa Torres, and then uh, eventually was donated by his daughter to the Prado Museum in the mid-20th century. And this painting down below was bought by a collector in Seville, and he bought what he thought was a view of Toledo, a landscape showing Toledo, maybe by El Greco, maybe by the workshop of El Greco. Here we can see the St. Martin's Bridge, we can see a castle. This is recognizable as Toledo. But the painting wasn't in great condition, and at the time it was, it was only a landscape. We couldn't see these legs. And he took it to be cleaned, and in the cleaning process, the restorers told him, what we have here is not just a view of Toledo, there are legs here. This is half of another painting. The painting moved into different hands for several years, and then in the 1980s it went up for sale, and uh, the Ministry of Culture purchased it for the Prado Museum, and clearly these are the legs that go with the upper portion. And El Greco is really a difficult painter. Maybe he's not to everybody's taste, or he certainly wasn't in his own time. Today we're familiar with modern art, we're familiar with avant-garde movements, we can appreciate how somebody like Greco questioned the canon and pushed rules and was so original, but it took a long time in history for this to all be appreciated. And he was really rediscovered by romantic painters uh, in the 19th century. Before this, El Greco was not as well known outside of Spain, and even when he was known, he was generally misunderstood and, and often disliked. Look at the sky, the details of the sky. It's um, filled with this light and shadow. It really almost reaches the level of abstraction. It's no wonder that modern painters would have been infatuated with El Greco when he was rediscovered, because he was really extraordinarily modern. When Manet came to see the Prado, he said that he came to see Velázquez, but he found El Greco. Now, of course, both painters were incredibly important for Manet, but this gives us a sense of the wonderful surprise it was to find Greco in the 19th century. So thank you for joining me, and we'll see you again next week.